Imagine you use a fintech banking app for your checking and savings uh, accounts. Uh, you get a good interest rate, the app is easy to use, and everything works fine. You can even do a direct deposit uh, from your employer into the account, and everything seems to be working fine until one day you can't get your money out, and then a month or more goes by. You can't access your checking account or your savings account. Well, that's exactly what's happened to hundreds of thousands of customers at several fintech companies, one of which is Yada. Here's their website. And we're going to talk about why that happened. Now, you may be saying right now, Rob, I appreciate that. I didn't bank at Yada. I don't even know what a fintech is. Why do I need to worry about this? Well, it turns out that some companies you may have heard of offer very similar arrangements. Have you ever heard of Fidelity or Vanguard? They both offer similar arrangements, and it raises the big question, could what happened at Yada happen at Vanguard or Fidelity? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about how these fintech apps and, and, and fintech banking accounts work. Then we're going to look at Yada and what happened there. And then we're going to talk about, is this arrangement safe? Could what happened at Yada happen at a bigger firm like Fidelity or Vanguard? So let's dive in. First, how do these uh, fintechs work? They're not FDIC insured banks, right? If we look at, at uh, uh, Yada, their website, they're not an FDIC insured uh, bank, but they partner with FDIC insured banks. And that's how you get your FDIC insurance. And so the way the transaction would work is you deposit, let's say a direct deposit from your employer goes into a checking account at a fintech like Yada. That money then gets transferred to one of their FDIC insured partner banks. And then if you ever wanna make withdrawal, you don't go to the bank. You go back to your, your app and you request the money back, either through a debit card it could be, or a transfer. And the financial technology company executes that. They basically go back to the, the, the partner bank and say, hey, we need $100 for a debit transaction. And it gets, it gets paid. And most of the time, uh, that works just well, of course, until it doesn't. And we'll talk about what happened. But we need to mention one other thing. You may be saying, well, Rob, why in the world would I do that? I mean, just go to a bank, right? I mean, when I was growing up, if you wanted to deposit money at a bank, you went to a bank. That's just how it worked. Well, there are some appeals to some of these uh, financial technology companies. First of all, many of them can offer uh, higher interest rates. Many of them offer extended FDIC insurance. In fact, um, keeping a page of, of, of these types of accounts here, and I'll leave a link to everything I show you, including this page, but you can see they, they offer extended FDIC insurance coverage, and they do that by partnering with multiple FDIC insured uh, banks. And by the way, if you know of other types of accounts I should add to this list, uh, please let me know. And others just find the apps easy to use. Now, in the case of Yada, let's turn to that and understand what happened. What was the appeal to Yada? Well, as I mentioned, this is what their website looks like today. You'll notice there's really nothing mentioned here about bank accounts, checking or savings, but that's because uh, since the troubles began uh, about a month ago, they've changed their website. If we go to February, and it's right here, this is what their website looked like just a few months ago, Banking for Winners, and they had uh, a, a savings account, and their sort of approach was prizes. You know, you can get, you can win money by saving or you can double your paycheck. This was for their checking account. Uh, uh, they even had a debit card. Those pages today are behind a password protected sort of firewall. So if we go to those pages live today, this is, this is what you get, right? So they're no longer apparently uh, a bank or a banking service anymore. Of course, with customers not being able to get their money out, no one would use their service anyway. So what in the world happened? What caused all this? Well, they actually have a, a history here. And again, I'll link to this. This shows that uh, the issues first occurring May 19th. So almost a, a month ago uh, today, they started experiencing issues and they even go back uh, a little further here. But I can just summarize it for you. The way their system worked, they used an intermediary to get money from, from uh, that the customers deposited into the partner banks. And that intermediary is a company called Snaps. Snaps went bankrupt. And when they went bankrupt, that, that link was broken. And now the, the partner banks are saying, wait a minute. Yes, this is money we're holding on to, but without Snaps functioning properly, we're not sure who, own, who truly owns this money. And remember, Snaps wasn't just working with 
uh, Yada, they were working with a number of fintech uh, companies. And so in effect, all the accounts, at least as best we can tell, kind of got jumbled. I think ultimately, I hope they'll be able to reconcile all of that over time, but it turns out there's a bigger issue. This is a report from the bankruptcy tr uh, 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 trustee. So there was, you know, Synapse is in bankruptcy. They appoint a trustee. That's how, chap in this case, Chapter 11 works. And the trustee filed with the court a status report. And this is it. It's a 23-page document. If you want to read it, as I mentioned, I'll link to it below the video. But what I want to show you is one particular paragraph that should concern any uh, customer uh, that's involved in any of those fintechs. It's this right here. It says the trial balances from the fintech partners, and that would be Yoda would be one example, and Synapse that served as uh, inputs for the initial bank rec reconciliation reflects a shortfall of $85 million. In other words, it's not just a matter of un trying to unscramble the egg and figure out you know, who ultimately is the owner of all of the different uh, uh, assets, money at these uh, uh, partner banks, but it appears that there's $85 million that's missing. Now, at this point, uh, we, I don't know why it's missing. I don't know. I don't think they have a sense as to who's responsible. Maybe uh, the money will turn up. This uh, status report was filed with the, the bankruptcy court uh, about a week and a half ago. So maybe there have been updates that I've missed since then. But that obviously is a big, big issue if you uh, are one of the hundreds of thousands of people who can't get your money out of Yada and other similar fintechs. Now, that raises the question, what about companies like Fidelity and Vanguard? And you might say, well, wait a minute, Rob, do, does this Fidelity and Vanguard do this sort of thing? Absolutely. If we start with uh, Vanguard, and I, I had a video, a separate video on their Cash Plus account, you'll notice here um, they give extended FDIC in insurance coverage. Whenever you see that, that's an indication that they are using partner banks, and that's exactly what they're doing. In fact, we can even look at a PDF. They list their partner banks, and there it is. So there's uh, the list of their partner banks, and so they're effectively doing the same thing. In fact, they even call it a sweep program. I can make this a little bigger. But when you deposit money uh, into uh, this account at Vanguard, uh, it gets swept to partner banks, multiple partner banks. That's how they get extended FDIC insurance coverage. Betterment does this. Wealthfront does this. Uh, Fidelity does the same thing with their cash management account that gives you um, uh, with partner banks. And they even that's how they get their FDIC insurance coverage, as you can see here. So this is this kind of approach to banking is very mainstream. It's not just with companies that maybe a lot of people haven't heard of, like Yada. It's also uh, big financial institutions like uh, Vanguard and Fidelity. And that sort of gets me to really the, the, I think the key issue for many of you, certainly for me is, well, could what happened at Yada happen at Fidelity or Vanguard? And my initial answer is, I don't think so, but it's not without risk. And let me explain why. To do that, uh, I want to go to um, the terms and services, the t terms of service for Yada. And here it is. And um, in these terms of service, if we search for Synapse, if I can spell it, there we go, we see that they disclose that they're using Synapse. In fact, probably one of the key paragraphs is this, and I know it's very small, but they just say right up front, Synapse is our back-end software provider and partners with financial institutions to provide FDIC insurance. Synapse is API, and their relationship with financial institutions enables us to offer banking services and, and products. And so they disclose, hey, we're using this intermediary to connect with these partner banks. The question is, is that what Vanguard and Fidelity do? Do they have some intermediary that they use? Now, I tried to get confirmation uh, of this directly with Fidelity and their support staff, and I was unable uh, to, to get a firm answer. However, if we go to, uh, we'll go to, uh, and again, I'll link to everything, this is a page related to their cash management account that sort of describes, in this case, the FDIC insurance. And uh, you'll see here, they say Fidelity automatically performs all transfers between your account and the program banks. There's no mention of an intermediary 
that sits between Fidelity and the program banks. And that, that wouldn't surprise me. Obviously, Fidelity is a massive financial institution, unlike Yada, for example. And so why in the world would Fidelity need to rely on some intermediary? They would just do it themselves. And at least from what I can tell from disclosures like this, that's what they do. But I want to stress, I wasn't able to actually confirm that with Fidelity. We go to the Vanguard account. They have um, uh, their own uh, terms of, uh, of use here. And if you read it again, I've read through this, it's 10 pages, but I get the same sense. There's no mention of any, any intermediary. It appears that the, that Vanguard Brokerage Services itself initiates these transfers. And so, uh, again, I haven't confirmed that with Vanguard, so I want to be clear about that. But if that's true, that takes out at least one pretty significant potential point of failure, a point of failure that obviously became a reality for customers of Yada and other fintechs that used Synapse as their intermediary. But does that mean these arrangements are without risk? No, I, I guess I can't say that. I think anytime you put anything between you and your money, there's risk. I mean, if you're depositing money in a bank, there's risk. Of course, we have FDIC insurance to insure against a lot of the risk subject to its uh, limits, but we're sort of trusting that the FDIC insurance program will work as advertised. We're sort of trusting you know, the banks to work as they're supposed to. So there's still some level of trust, but each additional layer between us and our money, I think adds risk. And at least as best as I can tell, uh, financial institutions like Fidelity and Vanguard don't have that extra intermediary between you and uh, your money. However, it is true that through those programs, you could not go directly to the program bank and ask for your money you would, could only go through Fidelity or uh, a Vanguard or a Betterment or a Wealthfront that offer similar services. You would have to go through those financial institutions to get access to your money. And so I suppose at the end of the day, the safest approach to FDIC insurance is to deal directly with banks. Now, having said that, would I be uh, unwilling to use, say, the, 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 the types of accounts that we looked at uh, at Fidelity or Vanguard? No, I, I think I would probably, just trusting those financial institutions, I would probably feel that that's a, a reasonably safe thing to do. I will disclose though, that at the moment I don't have, I don't use those types of accounts. Our cash happens to be in T-bills, but there again, there's some trust involved. I'm trusting the brokerage won't steal my, my, my investments. And I guess there's some level of trust with regard to any money we lend to our, uh, our government, uh, I suppose. In my mind, while nothing is risk-free, that's about as risk-free as you can get. And so I feel comfortable doing that. But again, I would feel comfortable using these sweep programs offered by uh, Fidelity or, or Vanguard, and for that matter, Betterment or, or Wealthfront. But I would not be comfortable either using uh, a service that used some intermediary that I was not uh, familiar with, or that itself was just not a, a company of size and that had been around for a long time, like uh, a fintech like uh, Yada. There have been a number of fintechs that have cropped up over the last five to five years or so. And I think for my money, I would say, yeah, I'm gonna wait on that. You may offer a little bit better interest rate. Maybe you've got a really cool app, but I'm just not feeling secure enough to put my money into a financial institution that hasn't been around for a while and doesn't have substantial customer base and, and assets, at least that's my take. So that's what's going on at Yada. Again, major financial institutions offer similar type of arrangements, but I think best I can tell, they are structured a bit differently, but if you're gonna leave your money with one of these accounts, you may wanna try to get confirmation directly with the financial institution. So there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.